The important things to remember about this budget on a statewide level is that we've restored full funding to higher education, colleges and universities with, uh, with making reductions in other areas. So when, when the governor introduced his budget, you'll remember he recommended a cut of $106 million to higher education. When the Attorney General announced the uh, mortgage settlement, the governor recommended that we put $40 million back into higher education from that settlement. We accepted that amendment. The governor actually provided us a governor's amendment requesting those funds, and we accepted it. Uh, that left us about $66 million to go in order to get back to full funding of higher education at last year's appropriated level. We were able to do that throughout the entire budget, and, and uh, I think that that's something that the House can be very proud of. We've also... Um, there's also an increase of $5 million and $1 to the foundation formula for elementary and secondary education. You'll recall during the governor's State of the State speech, he, uh, he bragged about the fact that he made the recommended highest budget, uh, the highest level of funding for elementary and secondary education in the history of the state by adding $5 million. Um, I was very critical of that at the very beginning. Um, to me, it was a political stunt and there's really no other way to describe it. We have a $3 billion uh, foundation formula. Adding $5 million to a $3 billion line is about one-tenth of 1% 1 of an increase. I really didn't think that was, uh, that was anything to crow about. So initially I took it out and, uh, and called it out for what it was. When we got down to uh, finalizing and balancing the House Committee substitutes, there was a little bit of money left in the bank and there was enough to cover it. And so I, I basically made the decision that I didn't need to punish the schools for the political stunt of the governor. And so I put the money back, but I put it back with an extra dollar. And that is to highlight what a political stunt it was to begin with. Uh, so we've put that back $5 million and $1 back into uh, elementary and secondary education. And just to be clear, if you calculate that out among the students in the state, uh, the governor's increase of $5 million works out to about $5.22 a student for the entire year. So uh, that's why I took it out to begin with. But again, like I said, we had some money left over, so we put it back. Um, we also are uh, leaving $12.1 million in the bank for uh, hey, a reserve that we can spend next year in supplemental. And this has to do with changing the way that we go about funding certain social services programs. Uh, several programs in this state are what's known as census-based. I mean, how much we spend depends on how many people are physically in the program. Every year, we come back in January, we have a supplemental that deals with these programs because we don't know today how many people are going to physically be on this program 16 months from now. Uh, so what we've decided to do is rather than fund 100% of the request up front, we're going to fund 75% of the request up front take the money that represents the remaining 25% and set it aside. We're not spending it, we're not uh, trying to fund other programs with it and then force them to come back and ask for money that's not there. We are literally setting it aside uh, for them to come back and ask for. We think uh, this will do a couple things. One, it provides less money uh, to play with, for lack of a better words, during the fiscal year as the governor withholds from this and moves money over here and withholds from that and moves money over there. Um, there'll be a little bit less flexibility because we haven't appropriated that authority. Um, secondly, when they come back for supplemental for the fourth quarter, they'll have a much better picture of how many people are actually on the program and what we need to spend. So it may be that they come back in the fourth quarter and don't need the entire amount that was represented. I mean, that, that could always happen. So that's why we've uh, set that aside and again are changing our focus on how we do those programs. Um, at the end of the day, after all of the things are funded, there is about $5 million left in the general treasury under this budget uh, from the House Committee. Um, on the governor's recommended budget, I believe there was $4,000 left in the bank. Uh, I tend to think that that's probably cutting it a little close. I mean, you spend $24 billion uh, with a cushion of $4,000. Uh, it seems a little bit tight to me. So we, we made the decision to leave about $5 million on the bottom line. Actually, I, I take that back. The governor left $58,000, not $4,000, my bad. Uh, so we left $5 million, he left 58000 So again, we've produced another balanced budget uh, for the state of Missouri. The uh, House has uh, implemented a different pay plan from what the governor had recommended. You'll remember the governor promised uh, over the interim that state workers were going to get a pay raise for the first time in, in several years. And he recommended that it be a 2% pay raise. The, uh, the state workers, of course, were, were uh, overjoyed by this. They haven't seen a raise in quite some time. In fact, in many cases, they are among the lowest paid in the country uh, for the positions that they hold. When the governor came back and offered his budget, 
in fact, it was a 2% pay raise, but it was a 2% pay raise starting halfway through the fiscal year. So when everyone knows that the fiscal year begins on July 1 and the state workers were expecting a raise on July 1, what happened in the governor's budget was they wouldn't get one until January of 13. Uh, what we've done is we've decided to go the full 12 months of the fiscal year for the 2% pay raise, but cap the pay raise, who qualifies for the pay raise, at $70,000 a year. Now, we think that providing everyone uh, of, our, of our more lower paid state workers a raise for 12 months is better than providing everyone, uh, in, including those that are making in excess of $100,000, a 2% pay raise uh, for the last six months of the fiscal year. Um, we've also gone through, and you've probably heard uh, or read about the discussion on ease in this budget. The E is a function that has been used throughout the budget in, in uh, the last several decades to represent what's called an estimated appropriation. If a line in the budget bill has a number and then there's the letter E next to it, that number is not a hard number. That, that E means that there's essentially unlimited spending authority in that line out of that account. Um, over the years, it's been used, I think, probably to make our job easier somewhat, and I think probably to make the administration's job a little bit easier uh, at times, but I think what's happened is, like many things, over time it's gotten out of control. Um, the recommended budget from the governor had 795 E's in the budget. That means there are 795 places in these bills that uh, he's asking for unlimited spending authority. Um, what we've decided to do is pare that back. We've eliminated about 444 of those. Um, what this does is, again, it reduces some of the flexibility, but it also increases transparency, and I'll give you an example. In House Bill 7, there's the Community Development Block Grant Program. If you look back for the last several years in the budget bills, the Community Development Block Grant Program is represented by $28 million with an E. However, if you look at what's been spent through that program in those years, you'll see that last year we spent nearly $60 million through it, even though our budget only showed 28. The year before, it was about 54. The year before that, it was close to 50. And so we made the decision that what we were passing in our bills was not an accurate reflection of what we were actually spending, and we didn't think that was transparent to the taxpayers, and we decided to fix that situation. So in those situations, uh, typically federal funds or other funds, what we've done is we've removed the E, but we've replaced it with a more accurate figure based on spending history. So I think what you'll see, if I remember right, in, in uh, the Community Development Block Grant Program in House Bill 7, you'll see $60 million, hard number, uh, which we think is more reflective to the taxpayers. So the difference is, if you look at the governor's introduced budget, it's about $23 billion, maybe $23.2 billion, something like that. When you look at the House's budget, the House's budget goes up by almost a billion dollars. Now, understand that's not increasing spending a billion dollars, it's increasing the transparency of what we were already spending, and, and we accomplished that by eliminating those E's. Um, we've also dealt with the issue of flexibility. Um, there's been some great deal discussion on the uh, budget committee about the flexibility that departments are allowed with the funds that they've been given. Um, we decided in many cases, and, and this was a bipartisan agreement, that uh, that flexibility was too great. And so we've pared that down and, and basically said, if this is what you're asking for the money to do, that's what we expect you to do with it, not to shift it back and forth between personal services and expense and equipment and that sort of thing.